Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wamplay here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Fountainhead to hopefully make things a little bit easier. In this particular video, our main focus is going to be on what it looks like to do a second draw Paycheck Protection Program loan application. Let's get started. When you first log into the application, you're going to be on a page that looks just like mine, where it's going to ask you to enter in your email address and press this button that says Get Started. After that, it's going to ask you to be able to enter in a one-time password that's been directly sent to your email, as shown. After you go ahead and enter in that code and press Continue, you're going to end up on a page that looks just like this, where it says before you start, please select the option that applies to your business. Either you've already had a PPP loan or you've had no PPP loan. In our particular case, where the focus of this video is in fact to do the second round paycheck protection program form, we're going to click already had a PPP loan. After that point in time, it's going to ask you to enter in the PPP loan number without the dash and the total loan amount. After you've entered that in, it's going to ask, did any affiliated business receive PPP, lo uh, PPP loans? You're going to go ahead and click yes or no. In my particular case, we're going to go ahead and click no. If you do have more than one affiliated loan, you're going to click add another affiliated loan. And then we're going to go right here to be able to press next. After you've gone ahead and entered in next, it's going to ask you for some basic loan eligibility questions. Let's go through them together starting at the top and working our way down. Was your business in operation on February 15th, 2020? Go ahead and click yes or no. In my case, that's a yes. Was your business in operation for all of 2019? You're gonna click yes or no. Is your business a seasonal employer? Yes or no. Does your business employ people outside of the owners? Yes or no. And then it's gonna ask for how many total employees you have at the business. Go ahead and enter in that number to the best of your ability. Is your business a restaurant, hotel, or other business eligible for special consideration? Yes or no? Is your business a destination marketing organization? Yes or no? And is your business publicly traded? Yes or no? After you clicked all those bubbles, we're going to go ahead and click next. After that, it's going to say revenue reduction. All businesses that are looking for a second draw loan under the Paycheck Protection Program are required to certify that their business experienced a revenue reduction of 25% or greater in one or more quarters, entire year of 2020, relative to the same period in 2019 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Therefore, you must choose either annual or quarterly comparison. Please say, uh, select yes to base your comparison on annual or no to base your comparison on quarterly. So, do you want to use an annual comparison, or do you want to use a monthly comparison? In my particular case, I'm going to go ahead and click monthly comparison, because I in fact have the forms to be able to substantiate that. After that, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you for first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and to enter in the quarter or multiple quarters in which your business experienced at least a 25% loss in revenue. In my particular case, that was business quarter three. You do not need to fill out every single box, only the boxes that you experienced a um, reduction of at least 25%. In 2020, our third year quarter was 75,000 versus our 2019 third year quarter was 100,000. As you can see, that's over a 25% decrease. After you've entered this into the best of your ability, we're simply going to click the next button. After that, it's going to ask us for our payroll details. It's going to have us enter the values based on the full time period of your choosing. We're going to select, do you want to do 2019, 2020, or the last 12 months? In my case, we're going to go ahead and do this off of 2019 to make it really easy. Then it's going to ask us for our total payroll, including employer compensation. In my case, we're going to go ahead and enter this into the best of our ability. Then it's going to ask the total payroll amount entered already includes benefits and taxes. Yes or no? In my case, that's a yes. Next, this business is a farm or ranch according to the Economic Aid Act. If it is, go ahead and click it. If not, please leave it blank. After that, it's going to say enter employee details. The number of employees that you had in the business employed as of 2 15 of 2020. I had 250. Then it's going to ask you to click the following boxes. Did you or did you not have some of these employees located outside of the U.S.? If you did, click the button. Some of these employees are contractors and file a 1099. Click the button if yes. Some of these employees are paid more than $100,000 a year. If so, go ahead and click yes. 
After that, it's going to say enter your eligibility values. Based on the number that we entered in above, it divided that number by 12 by the total number of employees, and this is my total amount in which my um, loan is going to be applicable for. My average monthly payroll times 2.5. After you verified that this is in fact correct, go ahead and click the Next button. Then it's going to take you into business information. It's going to ask for a little bit more information. It says this SBA um, is required by the government for your Paycheck Protection Program application. It's based on this particular form. So it asks for the business's legal name. You are going to ask for your business if it has another DBA or trade name, your business phone number, your business address in some way, shape, form, or capacity. In my particular case, we're actually going to adjust to this. Once you've verified that everything down here at the bottom is in fact correct, go ahead and click Next. After that, it's going to continue to ask for some more information. It's going to ask for your industry NAICS code. If you don't know your NAICS code, that's totally okay. Just click this bright blue hyperlink and it'll take you to a page where you can find it. Once you have that information, you're going to ent enter that directly into the system. As you can see, I'm doing it above. Click on the drop down and select the one that's most applicable to you. Then it's going to ask what your business legal structure is. You're simply going to click on the drop down and pick the one that's most appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and click S Core. After that, we're going to click on Year of Establishment. So in my particular case, we were established in 2012, and we were established February 1st, 2012. Then it's going to ask for your employer identification number. Please review this carefully. Incorrect information will result in a two-week delay. If your business does not have an EIN, go ahead and click My Business Does Not Have an EIN. This is particularly important for individuals who are like sole contractors, individual contractors, etc. So, as always, any and all information I show you guys directly in these kinds of videos is 100% falsified. We're just trying to make it as close to your experience as possible. Then, is this business a franchise? Yes or no? In my case, we're going to go ahead and click No, and then click Next. From here, it's going to ask you to enter in your first name, last name, email address, title, date of birth, and phone number. If your business is owned by a corporate entity, go ahead and click this box right here, and it's going to help you fill it out from there. After that, it's going to ask for your tax ID. This is your social security number. Again, any and all information I show you guys directly in this application is 100% falsified to make sure that this is as close to your experience as possible. Then, make sure that this box is clicked where it says this owner is authorized to sign legal documents for the company. Then, we're going to go to the slider bar where it's going to have you adjust how much of the company that you own. In my case, it's 100. Pick what's most applicable to you. After that, it's going to have you enter in your owner address. It's the um, street address, city, state, and zip code. And then, of course, if you want to use the same address that your business address is for your home address, you simply just click Use Business Address. After that, it has some voluntary self-identification buttons. So it's going to have you click your veteran status, your gender, your race, scroll down just a little bit to find it, and your ethnicity. After you filled out this entire application to the best of your ability, if you do have more than one owner, go ahead and click this Add Owner button. If not, press Next. This will take you to your government declarations, where it's going to ask you what you're planning on using this Paycheck Protection Program loan for. Are you planning on using it for payroll, utilities, property damage, worker protection, rent, mortgage, operations expenditures, supplier costs, or other? Please click anything and everything that applies to you. In my case, I'm going to click payroll costs. After that, it's going to ask us a couple more questions. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees included in the payroll calculation for the business? In my case, it's already clicked yes. Do any of the owners of the business own any other business? Go ahead and click yes or no. In my case, it's a no. And is this business a franchise that's listed in the SBA's franchise directory? Again, in my case, no. Then press next. There's a couple more. Are any of the owners of the business debarred or excluded from this transaction by any federal department or presently involved in bankruptcy? I'm going to go ahead and click no. Has the owner of the business for this business or any other business they own taken a loan guaranteed by any federal agency that is currently delinquent or which has defaulted in the last seven years? Yes or no. Is the owner of the business subject to criminal charges or presently incarcerated or on probation or parole? 
my case no, and make sure that you do your initials next to it to certify. After that, has any owner of the business been convicted of a felony involving a financial crime in the last five years, or been convicted of a felony or been placed on probation or parole within the last year? Again, in my case, no, and we're going to go ahead and initial to certify that, and press next. Then, we have a whole bunch more things we're going to initial next to. We're making the following certifications. First, that the applicant was in operation on February 15th of 2020, has now permanently closed, and was either an, an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, sole proprietorship with no employees, or had employees for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes for. Next, under the current economic uncertainty, it makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Next, the applicant has realized a reduction in gross receipts in excess of 25% relative to the uh, compensation time period. For loans greater than $150,000, the applicant has provided documentation to the lender substantiating the decline. Okay, again, we've initialed. The applicant has received a first draw paycheck protection program loan, and before the second draw paycheck protection program loan is disbursed, will have used the full loan amount, including any increase of first draw paycheck protection program loan only for eligible expenses. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or make payments for mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures. You understand that for loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures, and not more than 40% of the foreign amount may be used for non-payroll costs. If required, the applicant will provide to the lender and or SBA documentation verifying the full number of full-time equivalent employees on the applicant's payroll. The applicant has not and will not receive another second draw paycheck protection program loan. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. The president, vice president, head of an executive department, member of Congress, or spouse of such person as determined under applicable common law does not directly or indirectly hold a, co a controlling interest. Next. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are listed on an exchange registered as the National Securities Exchange. The applicant is not a business concern or entity for which any entity created in or organized under the Republic laws of China. The applicant is not required to submit a registration statement under Section 2 of the Foreign Agents Registration Act. The applicant is not a business concern or entity primarily engaged in political or lobbying activities. You further certify that the information that you provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. You understand that knowingly making a false statement to obtain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable underneath the law, including under 18 U.S.C. 1001 and 3571 by imprisonment of not more than five years or a fine of 250000 And you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using the required documents submitted. You understand and acknowledge and agree that the lender can share any tax information that you have provided with the SBA's authorized representatives. After you've been sure that you've put your initials next to everything, we're going to click Next. Then it's going to ask you if you wish to review your information. You can review your eligibility, your business information, your ownership, and your government declarations. Go ahead and click view or you can click edit. If you don't want to make any changes, if you feel really good about it, go ahead and click next. After that, it's going to ask us for a whole bunch of documents that we need to upload. It's going to ask us for things like entity formation documents. If you're not required, just hold your mouse on top of it and it says it's, it is required unless the applicant is a 1099 independent contractor sole proprietor. So if we have the, the entity formation documents, go ahead and enter that in here. So we're going to find that. We're going to click upload my documents. We're going to click this right here and we're going to press open. Next, it's going to ask for a bank statement to prove that the business was in operation on February 15th of 2020. We're going to click upload. We're going to go to my folder called Bank Statements, and there's my bank statement from February of 2020. It's going to ask for the driver's license or other real ID document front and back for me as the owner. So we're going to go to Upload. We're going to go to Documents. We're going to go to Driver's License. Go ahead and click Open. Give it a second. Upload. Driver's License. Click Open. 
Then, it's going to ask for a canceled check. Please make sure that you have a voided check that matches the same business information. Go ahead and click Upload. I have it marked as blank check in my system. I'm going to press Open. After that, it's going to ask for additional supporting documentation if necessary. It's going to say um, two. It's going to ask for your 2019 IRS Form 940 or your 1120S. Let's go ahead and click Upload. Let's find our Form 1120S. There it is, right there. IRS Form 941 from the latest quarter. So we're going to go right here. We're going to find our Q4 and we're going to press Open. It's going to ask for the 2019 business tax returns, and this is only for loans that are over 150 k In our case, that's not applicable. Quarterly financial statements. So again, we're going to go right here. We're going to go ahead and upload those directly into the statement. So there's one. Upload. Two. Upload. These are just your quarterly financial statements, whatever that means to you. Go ahead and upload those directly into the system. Three and four. And press open. Payroll summary support. Uh, next, we're going to go over the payroll summary report for the corresponding period, which reflects all employee wages and taxes withheld. We're going to go right here. We're going to go ahead and upload our, fold, our form right there. Make sure we've got our payroll summary form. If the payroll report is not available, these are copies of W-2s for all employees if applicable. And this will be your email wire information document. If you want to go ahead and get that, you can click right here to click download sample. It opens to your page that looks just like this, where it has all of your information. So your borrower name, your signer name, your form if applicable, all of this information to the best of your ability. This is going to ask for things like your bank address, your routing number, etc. If you have that and it's good to go, perfect. Just take a couple seconds and fill that out. I've already filled that out in the meantime, so I'm going to go right there. We're going to click that, and we're going to go ahead and press open. Now that we've got everything in here to the very best of our ability, every single piece of documentation is ready to go, we're simply going to press submit. Then it's going to take us to a page that, like this, where you can see the current status of my loan. It says it's been submitted to the verifier. That means that we're done. Anytime that you come back to the Fountainhead website, you can absolutely get back into your application, no problem. It's going to ask for that same email address, and then it's going to ask you for that same verification code that I showed you at the very beginning. What's going to happen from here is this particular lender is going to reach out to you directly via email in case they have any questions, comments, or concerns. But if you run into any problems with your application, please feel free to contact us. Thanks!